The end of the views in Google Analytics as we know them is perhaps the best metaphor of how Google actually handled the switch between Universal and GA4. If we just look at the browser, well, how did we come from this to this? Okay, Google, there are no views, and you simply remove the third column in the admin panel. But then, if we go to the official documentation, it seems that Google is still relying on the same old hierarchy with the account, property, and the data stream. Also, if you look at the concepts and definitions, Google is talking about the account, and then about the property, and then about the data stream. So, Google implies that data streams should take place of views in the account structure as we know it, except they shouldn't, because views are basically a particular data set that is limited by the filters that you impose on the raw data, and data streams, well, we have a totally different video, and it's linked in the video description about data streams in GA4. Now, let's go back to the Google Analytics 3 and see exactly what an analyst should deal with when switching from Universal to GA4 in terms of how do they find things that they were used to in GA3 views and what to do about them in GA4. Let's start with view settings. First of all, excluding URL query parameters was done in this section and right now there is no native way to exclude uh, URL query parameters from the URLs in GA4. There is some gymnastics that you can do in GTM, but you have to have a fair amount of skills in GTM to be able to do that. But before, you were simply required to type in the parameters that you wanted ignored by Google Analytics. Site search tracking, well, yeah, it's kind of easier in GA4 because data streams by default, when you turn on the enhanced measurement, you simply need to go to the configuration part of enhanced measurement and the site search is handled here. So you would type in your queries for your site search and Google Analytics will surface this data in the reports itself. Let's go back here. So yeah, no views, no view access management. That's fine. As per goals, well, you probably know they got a different name in Google Analytics 4. They are called conversions and they reside again in the middle column but even though there's a namesake tab here called conversions setting up is actually done in the event section where you basically pick from all the events that enter your google analytics data warehouse which one you want to treat as a conversion and then google uh, gives you the ability to use all the conversion related metrics now when we talk about the metrics that are calculated not only the google removed the possibility for us to create calculated metrics that we had in GA3, but they also removed some of the essential calculated metrics, which is uh, purchase to add to cart ratio or add to cart slash item view ratio, which were basically a nice indicator for the e-commerces to understand which products were viewed but not added to cart and then which ones were added to cart but not purchased. When we talk about the calculated metrics, it seems that Google is moving away from the concept of being a calculator to the just the big data warehouse and then you need to export the data either via BigQuery or another integrations to Looker Studio or some other tool where you can slice and dice the data. Okay, let's get back to the UA3 views. Well, in commerce settings, uh, Google promises that if you set up e-commerce regularly in GA4, this data comes up in the e-commerce and monetization reports by themselves. You don't have to do anything. Filters, we have a separate video on filters. It's linked to in this video description. Segments, well, they are called audiences in GA4. This is definitely one of the superpowers that GA4 has over the GA3 and the audience is actually deserve a separate video but creating an audience in GA4 is way more granular and more possibilities are offered. Let's move down the list. Annotations, multi-channel funnel settings, custom channel grouping, custom alerts. Well, if Google was actually using Google Analytics on the analytics.google.com website they would probably be able to understand 
how often people click on which links in the admin panel of the GA3 and then say, okay, these ones maybe don't deserve separate explanations in the admin itself, at least during the period of the transition, but some of them, such as goals or filters or content grouping, e-commerce, that could have been, I think, handled better in terms of user experience. To summarize this video, I just want to point out that even though the transition from GA3 to GA4 has been handled poorly, when you look at the missing column, that's just like, you know, amputation of the whole set of functionalities that people were used to. The things are not that bad once you go and dig a little bit under the surface because they are here. Some of them are handled differently. Some of them are unfortunately missing, but we can still find our way through. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and uh, hope to see you soon in a new GA4 topic.